All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. We've got double stifle to go with our reclaimer and knight, which can find Lotus Field and then Crawling Barons, a decent mana sink to have access to. So the earliest we can stifle a Lotus Field is turn three, but then we can't play the knight, so we'll have to decide if that's worth it. Or we can just draw Lotus Field and make this easy. So go full control, stifle. And we just ramped for two. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a band color deck titled Lotus League as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And you can become a Patreon supporter yourself today for as little as $2 per month, which works out to about 8 cents per video. And that's one of the best ways to support the channel, as well as getting you access to almost daily polls to decide which video gets featured next. And for today's deck, we're building around Lotus Field, the hexproof land that enters the battlefield tapped. And when it enters the battlefield, we have to sacrifice sacrifice two lands, but in return we get a land that taps for three mana of any one color. So definitely a powerful land worth building around. And how are we building around Lotus Field? Well, we've got three copies of Stifle, the one mana counterspell added in the latest anthology expansion, can counter, target activated or triggered ability. So Stifle has plenty of applications, and one of those is to counter our own Lotus Field trigger. So if we have one blue mana available, we play Lotus Field and then with Stifle counter the trigger that makes us sacrifice two lanes, and now we get a Lotus Field without any drawbacks. And then another way to counter our own Lotus Field is with Strict Proctor added in Strixhaven. The 1-3 Flyer says whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that ability unless its controller pays two generic mana. And of course, since we're the controller of Lotus Field, we can easily decline to pay the two mana, and now we get a Lotus Field without drawbacks. And then Strict Proctor can also potentially stop opposing enter the battlefield abilities unless the opponent pays two mana. So has plenty of utility besides our Lotus Field combo. And then we also have a few ways of searching up Lotus Field if we don't manage to draw one, thanks to Elvish Reclaimer, a 1 mana 1 2 that gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as there are 3 or more land cards in our graveyard. And for 2 mana, we can tap Reclaimer and sacrifice a land to search our library for any land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So Reclaimer can find our Lotus Field to then maybe combo with our Stifle or Strict Proctor. And then the Reclaimer will naturally grow up to a 3 4 as we sacrifice more lands and has natural synergy with Lotus Field as well. And then another way to search up lands is with our Knight of the Reliquary, a 3 mana 2-2 two two that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each land card in our graveyard. And we can tap the Knight and sacrifice a Forest or Plains to search our library for any land card and put it onto the battlefield untapped, and then we get to shuffle. So Knight can search up Lotus Field as well, and will also grow to a pretty big threat to help us end the game. And then both of these creatures also have additional utility, since we can potentially find our one-off copy of Crawling Barons as a nice mana sink that can also help us end the game. And we also have a one-off copy of Bojuka Bog as a Graveyard Hate, because when Bojuka Bog enters the battlefield, we can exile target player's graveyard. So that's another nice one to potentially search up against certain decks. And then we can also find our Fabled Passage, which is another land we can sacrifice to increase the number of lands in our graveyard for Reclaimer and Knight of the Reliquary. And then we can search up our various basic lands and potentially sacrifice those as well. So those are some of the combos in our deck with Lotus Field. And then of course with all that mana from Lotus Field, we can ramp into powerful threats like Koma, Cosmo Serpent, the seven mana 6-6 six six Legendary Serpent that cannot be countered. So great against the various blue decks in the format. And at the beginning of each upkeep, we get to make a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Koma's Coil, and we can sacrifice another serpent at any time to either tap target permanent and its activated abilities cannot be activated this turn, or Koma gains indestructible until end of turn so a great way to protect the Cosmo Serpent. And then we also have two copies of Nissa, Steward of Elements, which we can potentially sink a bunch of mana into, and she will enter the battlefield with X loyalty counters on it. The plus two lets us scry two. The zero ability lets us take a look at the top card of our library. If it's a land card or a creature card with mana value less than or equal to the number of loyalty counters on Nissa, we get to put it straight onto the battlefield. And the minus six lets us untap up to two target lands we control, and they become five five elemental creatures with flying and haste until end of turn. 
and untapping our lotus field also makes it a safe creature to animate as the hexproof prevents it from getting killed by opposing removal spells so let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Lenora Elves to speed up the deck alongside our Elvish Reclaimer, three copies of Stifle, as well as the full playset of Brainstorm as a great card selection tool letting us draw three and then put two cards from our hand back on top of our library and then there's no shortage of shuffle effects between Elvish Reclaimer or Knight of the Reliquary and even our two copies of Fabled Passage in the mana base will let us shuffle away cards we don't want to keep in our hand. And then we also have two copies of Pact of Negation, the zero mana instant speed counterspell, but at the beginning of our next upkeep we have to pay five mana, and if we don't we lose the game. So Pact of Negation allows us to potentially tap out against opposing combo decks while still keeping up interaction, and we can even count our own Pact of Negation trigger in our upkeep thanks to Stifle if we don't have the five mana to pay for it. Then we've got our Strict Proctor and Nissa, which we're usually playing in the late game. And then at 3 mana, the full playset of Knight, as well as two copies of Cura, Behemoth Beckoner, the 3 mana Planeswalker, that starts out on 7 loyalty and can minus 1 to untap target permanent. So great synergy with Lotus Field, as we can potentially play Cura and then untap Lotus Field, essentially letting us play Cura for free. And then whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we also get to draw a card. Now do keep in mind, it's a bit of a nombo with our Strict Proctor, so if we play a large Knight of the Reliquary or Coma, we will have to pay the two additional mana if we want to draw a card with Cura if there's a Strict Proctor in play. And then of course a full playset of Knight, which is one of our main win conditions, as well as three copies of Ajani the Great Hearted, which is very synergistic in our deck thanks to the passive ability giving our creatures vigilance, allows us to potentially attack with creatures like Lenor Elves, Reclaimer or Knight of the Reliquary, and still tap them for mana or activate their various abilities in our second main phase or during the opponent's turn. The plus one gains a three life, and the minus two puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker we control, so this turns our smaller creatures creatures like Lenor Elves and Strict Proctor into actual threats so they can help us end the game. And then of course our three copies of Koma, Cosmo Serpent, which is our main ramp target. And then going over the mana base, we've got four copies of Lotus Field, and we can sometimes get all four copies in play, especially if we've got an active Elvish Reclaimer alongside a Strict Proctor. Then we've got our two copies of Fabled Passage to shuffle away, great with our Brainstorm as well. Reason we're not playing all four copies is that Fabled Passage can be a little bit awkward with Lotus Field, since Lotus Field can sometimes make it so we don't have a lot of lands in play, so Fabled Passage will often enter the battlefield tapped, but it can be a nice land to search up with our Knight of the Reliquary, since that allows us to potentially put one additional land in the graveyard to get the Knight an additional plus one plus one. Then we've got our Crawling Barons as one of our utility lands that can help us end the game, as we can sink a ton of mana into it to put more plus one plus one counters on it. And then we do need a lot of forests and plains to go with our Knight of the Reliquary, since we can't just sacrifice any land like we can with the Elvish Reclaimer. So we've got the full playset of Breeding Pool, full playset of Temple Garden, and full playset of Hallowed Fountain, as well as one of each basic land to go with our Fabled Passage. And then we also have two copies of Botanical Sanctum, since blue and green are the colors we need to have access to on turn one the most. And then of course our one-off Bojuka Bonk as Graveyard Hate that we can search up. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with an interesting hand. We can get a Lotus Field in play on turn 2 thanks to Stifle already. Or we can play it slow and go for the Strict Proctor turn 2, turn 3 Lotus Fields. A Knight to draw. I'm kind of liking the turn 2 Stifle. The only drawback is that we use Stifle, so we won't be able to save it for Pact, but against a red deck I'm probably not going to need Pact right away. Turn to Mindstone, alright, so it's kind of a rampy control deck. So we do need to go full control for this to work, otherwise there's a chance uh, it will just sacrifice both lands, which would be a disaster. Alright, so can't cast a Pact since we only have 4 mana in our upkeep but we'll be able to play another Proctor plus Lotus Field potentially next turn. And then we're pretty close to casting Coma. Another Mind Stone for now, that's fine. Into Maze Mind Tomb. And our opponent's gonna Scry. Play Proctor. Play Lotus Fields, decline to pay.
So now we can cast the Pact if really necessary. And then next turn Coma. Ooh, Bloodsun. That actually would have been nice with our Lotus Field, since it would have entered the battlefield untapped. Now it did lose Hexproof, so if our opponent's got some land destruction, they can potentially go after the Lotus Field. But uh, yeah, just gonna play a Coma here. I suppose Fabled Passage lost its abilities because of Blood Sun, so probably should have uh, sequenced a little differently if we also wanted to play the Elves. Anger of the Gods is probably fine. Don't think we need to pack that. So our opponent might be playing their own Lotus Field here as we see it. So yeah, Blood Sun is another way to potentially build around it. So attempt this for green, play knights, and then can play another knights, and then maybe even an elf. So the knights are still pretty small right now, but that will change quickly. And actually don't mind using Koma to tap down Lotus Field in the opponent's upkeep. Especially now that they already use the Maze Mind Tome. So tap Lotus Field, sacking Serpents. And then we still have a backup Serpent to protect Koma. They can use Lotus Field to sacrifice Mindstone if they want, that's fine. So the floating mana disappeared as her opponent passed to another phase. Iron Crank Feet. Alright, we'll just counter whatever they ramp into here. Starve Extinction. No thanks. And her opponent packs it in. We would have been able to protect Koma from the board wipe, but we would have lost... All our other creatures here, and our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We're missing a way to interact with Lotus Field, but we do have turn to Knight of the Reliquary potentially. So we'll still try it. Turn one Snow Covered Island into Storm Tamer, so blue tempo deck. So it's probably going to be a tough matchup since we don't have many flying creatures to interact with our opponent's creatures. Could see Curse Obsession or Curiosity, and yeah, turn to Obsession. So this is a matchup we're having like a Blast Zone in a mana base to search up with Knight or Reclaimer could be useful. Although of course also ends up uh, destroying some of our one drops. Alright, so turn two knights and then take it from there. And do have a brainstorm to combo with our knights to shuffle away any undesired cards. A Jani lets us attack and play defense or activate knight. If our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana representing counter spells. Then I probably don't want to tap out for a 4-mana Planeswalker. And we might be better off searching up Crawling Barons as an extra threat. Now Koma is uncounterable at least. Can start by playing another Elves. That resolves. Yeah, probably just play a tapped Temple Garden. And pass. And then we can end of turn brainstorm, shuffle with knights, get a crawling barons maybe. They do have more creatures to add to the board. 
just a sailor. Take three. So we're definitely behind this game. Gonna need to get lucky to resolve Coma, which might give us a chance. Racing with Crawling Baron's probably gonna be too slow. Stifle can counter my Lotus Fields. We could also just cast Coma normally without all Stifle Lotus Field combo, just by using the Knight to get an extra land. So that might be better actually. And then get rid of a Johnny and Lotus Fields. Stifle could still be useful at countering Storm Tamer triggers. Or I could keep a Johnny in case I do tap out and get rid of Stifle. Sure. And then use Knight to get Crawling Baron still. Although I guess I need to make sure I have enough blue mana. So I might not be able to afford to get Crawling Barons just yet. Yeah, I guess we'll get a Breeding Pool. Fable Passage can get a Forest which we can sacrifice with Knights. Planes also works. Needs to get a blue source. So I suppose that's gonna cost me two life. Since I can get a botanical sanctum and have it untapped. Play coma. At least it's uncounterable. And now we've got two large threats in play. Can use Koma to maybe tap down Storm Tamer as well. And if they do eventually tap out, we can try and resolve a Jani. See Dasher Octopus, not what we wanted to see. They could also have bounce spells for Koma. Probably have to tap down a flyer. Wait until beginning of combat to decide which one. In case they have more enchantments. Guess we'll tap down a storm tamer. Right, it gets countered by the other storm tamer. Fair enough. So bound spells would be bad. So if Kira gets countered, I could still play in a Johnny if I shock myself. Might be worth it. Could also try and bait with Brainstorm. Don't know if our opponent's gonna take the bait though. If Kira resolves, we can potentially use a knight and still attack with it. Alright, Lofty Denial's gonna counter. That's fine. And then we'll try to play a Jani. They might have a second counter here. Spell Pierce. Can't quite pay for it. I can use Knight to get one mana, essentially. So that works. So we'll attack for 11. And then we can use two Serpents to tap down the opponent's creatures here. And then... 
probably wait until beginning of combat anyway, so no need to do it in their upkeep. And of turn sailor. Storm Tamer will have to respond. Sacrifice both serpents, otherwise they can just counter it. And we could see another Sea Dasher Octopus or Curious Obsession on Sailor. If they have two of them, we could just be dead. We removed the abilities from Storm Tamer, so they can't use that one to protect the Octopus. Alright, so we would fall to two here, down to one. And our opponent can use this Storm Tamer to potentially protect the other one, so we can just tap it down with another Serpent to attack for the win. So, probably still dead here, unless we top deck. Strict Proctor is an extra blocker. Is that enough to survive? So I could use Coma to tap down Storm Tamer to force him to essentially sacrifice the author Storm Tamer. Which I guess is a good exchange, because then they lose a 2-2. So Storm Tamer gets sacrificed. I can attack with probably, let's see, maybe just these two would still force a chump. And if they have a lofty denial, I can pay for it if I play Proctor here. So that chumps. And this needs to resolve. It does, so we have another Serpent coming from Coma to tap down one of their flyers. If they have another flyer end of turn, we're dead. They don't. Alright, so we're still in this. A Bounce Spell would still kill us. Okay. Can block. Still at one. And what a game this has been. Opponent goes digging. And our opponent concedes. Wow, what a game here. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this sounds great. Got our turn to stifle Lotus Field. And then Lotus Field can make the white mana necessary for Strict Proctor. I will play my island here in case we're playing against a discard deck so we can hide some of our cards with Brainstorm. But I'm not gonna cast a Brainstorm turn one just yet. Go full control, play Lotus Field, stifle it. And next turn we can play essentially a free Kiora. And then we wouldn't mind a shuffle effect to leverage Brainstorm. Ooh, cleansing wildfire to destroy our islands. Good thing Lotus Field has hexproof. So I could get my white mana this way. Alright, Coma. That one we can ramp into thanks to Kiora plus Lotus Field. So, play Kiora. And then, what do we want to play here? Maybe 
play Breeding Pool untapped to play Proctor and then keep up double Brainstorm at instant speed. Is this a Stone Rain? Yeah, it sure is. Funny thing is we can still cast Coma here, so that works. There's no real need to Brainstorm, but I guess we might as well fire one off. Backup Coma, and this does a nice one too. Alright, so this doesn't matter too much. Now, Proctor will counter our Kiora, drawing us an extra card, but that's fine. Play Coma. And then our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is reasonable. Could use an untapped white source. Since now we don't get to play turn 2 Strict Proctor unless we want to fetch on turn 1. So if I play turn 1 Elves, I still wouldn't be able to really speed up anything. So I think I'm better off just playing Fable Passage and then going Proctor into Knight. Facing turn 1 Mountain. Another Mountain. Doesn't seem to be an aggressive deck. But we'll see here. We've got a backup Strict Proctor in case the first one gets dealt with. Uh -huh, it's a Goblins deck, just with a bit of a slow start. Yeah, Goblins is going to be tough. Now we can stifle a Muxus trigger, potentially, so that's an interaction that could come up. For now we'll play Knights. And next turn we can potentially play Johnny attack and still get a Lotus Field. Proctor counters the Instigator, that's a funny interaction. Opponent will pay for it. Gets an extra token. And we drew a Lotus Field. So... If I play Lotus Field, I wouldn't be able to play a Jani. Although, I'm not attacking with a Knight here. I would just be attacking with Strict Proctor. So... I think I'm still gonna play Jani since Lotus Field isn't really ramping into anything just yet. Hits with the Proctor. And then can keep Knight on defense, end of turn, sacrifice planes here to get a Lotus Field. Proctor will also counter Muxus entering the battlefield, so opponent will need more mana. Opponent goes after a Jani. Alright, well, we can block a Chieftain, block another Chieftain, hope they don't have a Jump Palm. And then no real need to activate Knight now. Opponent loses both Chieftains. So that was a pretty good exchange for us. Get Lotus Fields. And let's see here. Six mana, seven. So we can cast Coma here. If we use the Knight to get an untapped land. So, yeah, let's go for it. Make a bunch of green, a bunch of blue. Sacrifice Fountain. Might as well get Fabled Passage, since we still have a basic land to get, and it puts an extra land in Graveyard. Play Coma. And we can still play Lotus Field. Alright, I guess we'll hit for two. And next turn a Jani is going to be a great way to help us play offense and defense at the same time. And thanks to the Proctor we don't need to fear Muxus closing out the game out of nowhere. Krenko could still be problematic. But our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one.
Our right for on the draw. Our hand has potential if we find white mana especially. Otherwise we can use Reclaimer to get a white mana for Knight and a Jani. I'll try it. Brainstorm also combo with Reclaimer. Alright, so let me play the Breeding Pool. Still probably leading with Elves. And then turn 2, we might a Reclaimer, maybe end of turn Brainstorm, we'll see. Okay, Branch Walker. Blast from the past as we see Wild Growth Walker on top. And there's a Temple Garden, perfect. Turn 2 Knights. And then Brainstorm a very good combo with Knight Order Reliquary as well. Could maybe play a Jani, attack, activate Knights, still Brainstorm. Probably not a hand where we're getting a Lotus Field right away. Interplanar Beacon, so our opponent might be a Commanded Red Horde deck. As we see more ways to fill the graveyard. Alright, so I can't really attack with Knight of the Reliquary, even if we play Janium, give it a plus one counter. Or can I? Jani puts us up to three, I can get a fetch land, would get it up to five, but our opponent can just double block. So, probably still worth it to play a Jani. And then sacrifice forests. Get a botanical sanctum maybe. So we don't have to pay life. And then Bojuka Bog is gonna be a pretty nice one to stop a commanded red horde. There's Tamio. And we'll find out what time he was looking for. Goes for Vraska, Golgari Queen. See Kazmina as well. And if her opponent attacks a Jani, they leave Time You're Vulnerable. So just J Light attacking. Could save a Jani here. Is it worth it? Probably. Lotus Field to draw. So now I can play Reclaimer. Probably want to brainstorm first. Another brainstorm. Yeah, I guess I'll play the Elves. And then shuffle away Island Lotus Fields. Play the elves. Could brainstorm again. Think we just put counters everywhere. Back while you still can. And then knights can attack. And they'll have to chump if they want to save Tamio. And then we'll keep Knight available. Think I'll keep Hallowed Fountain in hand to maybe shuffle away with Brainstorm later. And most likely you're gonna activate Knight. Don't need to get Bojuka Bog just yet. Wait for the opponent's graveyard to be full and them to cast Commanded Red Horde. And then what are we getting with Knight? Maybe just Fable Passage. Do still have planes we can fetch. Jade Light attacks. Not sure what I should be playing around here. Five mana. Maybe they've got a board wipe and they're gonna kill everything anyway. If it's a languish, I guess I don't want to block with knights. And just block with an elves. That's the only one I can really think of. Uh, just another J lights. Finds two lands. 
So next turn we could see Commander Dreadhorde. Opponent tries to get back with her Bloom Command. Do I care about that? Not really. I have learned much from my ancestors. All right, that's fine. And we'll activate knights. Yeah, Fable Passage. And I do think I fetch now, even though we could save it to go with Brainstorm. We've got other shuffle effects available. Pact of Negation is also good insurance to have. So let's brainstorm main phase again. And then I can play Reclaimer. I'll play the life since I don't think it matters too much here. Now do you see the benefits of peace? These two go after Taimyo, this one can go face. And then we can activate both Reclaimer and Knight of the Reliquary to get Bushuka Bog. All stories must end. And yeah, pass the turn. Now they can get back my creatures as well with Commanded Red Horde, but that's fine. Opponent is looking at my elves. Alright, so we'll activate Reclaimer, Sack Sanctum, which we cannot sacrifice with Knight of the Reliquary. It gets Bushuka Bog. And that resolves three life for three creatures. And we'll get our Crawling Barons now, I think. All right, again, plus a Jani. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an excellent hand. Now we will have to Fable Passage for Island if we want to stifle Lotus Field, but that seems worth it. And then Kiora can untap our Lotus Field to ramp into anything we might draw. Facing a Gigantha deck. Nissa, another nice mana sink. So next turn I can play Kiora and play Johnny maybe. Expressive iteration. Gonna leave the opponents tapped out for the most part. Yeah, opponent is just guy, but they've already played land, so they don't get to play the land they revealed. And Koman, excellent curve topper too here. Alrighty. So tap this for either green or white. And then I can play a Johnny. And Reclaimer. And probably just plus for now. now do you see the benefits? Reclaimer would still die to a 3 damage burn spell like Lightning Helix if I put a counter on it. Thought Erasure sadly takes away one of our cards. Probably gonna be Coma, but Nissa still an excellent curve topper. So our opponent might be a Niv-Mizzet Reborn deck if they're playing all these multicolor cards. Alright, so I can play a large Nissa Steward of Elements. Could also play Knight alongside it. Let's see here. I love to make a splash. Yeah, X equals 6 lets me ultimate and then hit our opponent for a bunch. And then I have the decision to either 
minus a Johnny before or after ultimating, probably before, so we get to keep our Nissa in play. Although our lands deal a bit less damage now. And actually could have tapped differently and still cast the knights had I turned Temple Garden into a lands, but I guess I didn't want to expose that to potential removal. Um, I guess we'll still activate Reclaimer here. And then sacrifice a land to get Crawling Barons, maybe. This one enters the battlefield tapped, so we can't use it for mana. But yeah, it's interesting that we could have still cast a knight here if we wanted to. Because of the vigilance from a Johnny. So our opponent's all the way down to four, facing a lot of different threats. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an exciting hand. We've got both a Stifle and the Proctor to go with our Lotus Field. I guess we're missing something to ramp into, but even get to play turn on Elves to speed things up. And then we're ready to cast a pretty early Coma. Stitcher Supplier. Okay. So we might want access to our Graveyard hit at some point, and Knight of the Reliquary is a good draw. So I could play turn to Knight. Kind of like that idea, that way we can tutor up our Graveyard Hate if needed. And I can still play Proctor, Lotus Fields, and find another Lotus Field. So, no cards in Graveyard just yet that we need to worry about. A Mar Triton finds even more lanes. And there's Coma, perfect. So this turn, Proctor, play Lotus Fields. Proctor also would have been able to counter the Mara Triton for what it's worth. Play another Elf, and then we can keep up Knight to either get another Lotus Field or get some Graveyard Hate, although I guess with Proctor in play, it will cost us two more mana to uh, get the effect from Bojuka Bog. So most likely just getting another Lotus Fields. Tombound Lich also countered by Proctor, putting in quite a bit of work. And right now, I do have the mana to just cast Coma without sacrificing Hallowed Fountain for Lotus Field, so we might want to save that to maybe get a Crawling Barons, although Coma by itself should be enough. So we'll get another Lotus Fields. Probably fine to tap my elves. And then just hit for one. And now we can get Bushuka Bog and pay for it as well. And Koma will slowly build up an army of serpents. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that could use white mana. Otherwise we do have Proctor to ramp into Coma. It's definitely a risky keep. If we don't get to white mana soon, if we find Brainstorm we can cast it, that can help. Yeah, I'll try it. Could also draw Stifle and cast it with our Lotus Field. Well, speak of the devil. Now the Strict Proctor isn't doing a whole lot for us anymore. A Leonin Light Scribe, okay. So Red White Prowess deck, Kiora is a fantastic draw, as that will allow us to ramp into Coma next turn. Do we play Strict Proctor? If we play Proctor, it will counter Koma's Entra Battlefield trigger with Kiora in play. So might not be worth it, although it could also stop the opponent from doing stuff. And get to play double Proctor. Yeah, fair enough. Probably worth it here.
So, kept a bit of a sketchy hand, but definitely got paid out in full. A reckless Rage, that's fine. I could Pact of Negation and pay for it, but then I wouldn't be able to play Coma. And then I can chump with Proctor to protect Cura, which seems worth it. Probably don't want to play Lotus Field since I want to keep Crawling Barons. So we'll pass. And then we've got Pact as backup. Hopefully that's enough. Reckless Rage, my token. Might as well sacrifice it. So that should prevent any attacks. Fine strike, sure. And a guiding voice or points definitely going off. But we still have a coma in play. Academic probation can maybe prevent coma from blocking. And a defined strike, okay. Can still block a light scribe. This is a free block. And Johnny. Awkwardly can't play it without untapping Lotus Field first. Alright, so we got to see our Lotus Field deck in action. Now, is the deck actually good? It's hard to tell, it's definitely doing some powerful and interesting things, especially if you get those explosive starts with Stifle or Strict Proctor into a Lotus Field, and Lotus Field has proven to be a competitive card in other formats. So maybe if we get more tools to combo with Lotus Field, maybe some other cards that have negative Enter the Battlefield abilities that we can Stifle or prevent with Strict Proctor, the deck could finally get there. For now, it's definitely an interesting proof of concept, but uh, we'll keep exploring these synergies in the future. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.